no, there is no reason to slap yourself as you try to wake up from this dream. JV is legitimately fired. I woke up to the news this morning. It was some of the best news I could have woken up to. Um, and, well, it, it means that the way we look at the next season now for the next 30 games, I think it's going to be a lot different, or at least at the moment it feels like, you know, things have changed within 24 hours. One single move has changed the complexity of how we look at this team. So I'm really excited. Here are my initial thoughts. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the arrival because I don't know a lot about Kevin Ollie as, an, as a coach, full stop. I don't know what he's going to bring as an interim. I do know that the locker room does respect him, though. Um, there has been reports that earlier, the, earlier on in the year when we played Charlotte and lost, Kevin Ollie was very vocal in the locker room and he was forceful and effective, is, is the words of, you know, someone. Um, it hasn't been specified who. Dennis Smith Jr., when we were up against Oklahoma City and it was like a 28-point lead at the half, Dennis Smith Jr. was was really, really pushing how good Kevin Ollie was in terms of rectifying the defensive work, um, at least, you know, in terms of that game and what effort we brought to that game. Um, and the results showed. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm not going to speak too much about him, as I said, because I don't really know a lot about him, but... From face value and from what people have said and what reports have been leaked, um, I do think that, well, I think the team's going to play for him, number one, but he is, like, it, it doesn't take a genius to work out that he is more experienced in terms of having coached UConn um, and he's had more success there. He's brought him to, well, a national title, I do believe. So he's, he's got the experience, more experience than JV, which wasn't hard to do. Um, but he hasn't coached an NBA franchise before. So, look, I just hope that this isn't an excuse for Sean Marks to hire Kevin Ollie on a full-time basis. Um, we've seen what happens when we replace a coach with an interim and they play well or they coach the team well that they play well. You know, we end up hiring him full-time. Um, and, and with Sean Marks still at the helm, I do have a few reservations. I hope that that is not going to indicate that Kevin Ollie is going to be there long term. Um, it needs to be a stopgap solution and nothing more. But regardless, immediately, I feel more optimistic because JV didn't have ideas. He wasn't in an inspiring sort of coach in the sense that he was talking a lot. He was talking a lot about attitude, mentality, um, you know, general philosophy stuff, but even that philosophical stuff wasn't translating to how we played. So even though we may not have the skill level, the effort's got to be there and the the baseline for a system's got to be there. Neither of those things were there. So from that point on, you know, the players couldn't really buy into anything because they knew that this was all flawed and it was all false and fake and fraudulent. So we've got rid of him. Um, and that is a step in the right direction. By no means are we done with what we need to do to get to where we want to be. Um, but hopefully, as I said the other day, I was hoping um, a few days ago that we can see a good product for the final 30 games. I do have hope that at least for the final 30 games, it's only 30 games, Kevin Ollie surely is able to muster up something that is a little bit more reminiscent of an NBA team. And hopefully we don't have this rotational bullshit, which was compromising certain players, compromising our play, like starting Cam Johnson when clearly that did not work. Um, ever since he returned from injury, probably 13 or 14 games into the, into the year, um, him, Cam Thomas, hopefully is not getting benched for the rest of the season. Um, and maybe we may see more of Noah Clowney and, and those sort of guys that haven't really gotten much run um, because the veterans are ahead of him. So hopefully there is a little shift in that as well. Um, but ultimately, I'm just looking forward to having a little bit more inspiration on the offensive side and the defensive side. The application's been poor on the defensive side for quite some time. And with a bunch of defensively-minded players, it should have never been the case. Um, and on the offensive side, a lot of isolation basketball this season. We've been, well, in the top 10, definitely. Nearly the top five 
for isolation possessions. Um, and Mikel Bridges and Cam Thomas, as good as they are, they're not cut out to play that sort of game. So hopefully we're going to be seeing a few more strengths being maximized at the rim, potentially some more mid ranges, wide open threes, good screens, good cuts, because a lot of these players are good at cuts. Um, Mikel Bridges hasn't been utilized as a cutter enough this season. Um, so those are a couple of things that I'm looking forward to. And ultimately, there's going to be a ton of speculation until the end of the season who is going to be the long-term replacement um, in terms of manning and pioneering the next phase of the Brooklyn Nets history, really. Um, and it's going to really indicate which way we want to go. If it's a younger coach, maybe that indicates that we're we're going to be further into the lottery um, in the coming years, or we go the other way and we we get a coach bud or someone like that that indicates that we want to win um, and want to win quite a few more games than we have this season. So I'm not going to speculate and I'm not actually going to throw my picks into the mixer with regards to who's going to be the next coach because quite frankly, I think I'm probably going to miss on it and I think a lot of other people have already missed on it. So um, look, I'm just really excited to see something different. I think that really sums it up. No, it doesn't indicate that we're going to be a significantly better team, but I just think I'm actually going to start enjoying watching this team again. Hopefully it's not a guarantee. And then if shit hits the fan, um, even with Kevin Ollie as coach, while we know who the real problem is or where the real problem lies. Um, but let's hope we don't get to that phase, of course. So that's going to do it from me. That was a short little video about what I think. What do you think? Um, and I've just said that I don't want to speculate and guess what coach is going to be the long-term coach for this team, but put in the description who you think will be the next long-term coach or who you would like to see in that position. And also, what do you think of this move, generally speaking? Is it the right move? I mean, I don't really think any net supporter is going to say that it is the wrong move. Um, but what do you think of Kevin Ollie being the interim? Um, is this going to impact us in the final 30 games? Do we potentially have a huge uptick in form? I've got no idea, but you know, um, it's, it's really going to be interesting to see how it all pans out. Time will tell ultimately. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe. We'll be back with the watch alongs later this week. It'll be the first game where Kevin Ollie is in charge. So make sure to tune in for that because maybe we're watching a different Nets team, even though we've got the same personnel. So make sure to tune in for that. Um, I also did another video the other day. The Nets are in crisis. That's what I said. That's what I titled it. So if you want to see what moves we need to make next, at least in my eyes, make sure to watch that one as well. But for now, have a good one. We'll see you soon. Bye for now.